So this is section 5.4, differential equations. So the first question is, what is a differential equation? The answer, it's just an equation with one or more derivatives in it. So let's write that out. So the order of a differential equation, it's just the highest derivative that appears in the equation. So here's a couple examples. So this only has the first derivative in it. So this is first order. Here we have just a different notation, but that is my second derivative. So this one is second order. Let's do an example. So we're going to use separation to solve this because this is separable. So y prime, we can rewrite it as dy dx. And then we separate all the y's on one side, x's on the other, and we actually separate the dy dx. Now that they're all separated, we can integrate both sides because it's with respect, one side's with respect to x. Doesn't matter which way you put that. There's with respect to y. That's the natural log of y. And then to solve for y, e on both sides. This is e to the 3x, e to the c. You have the same base, you add your exponents. Don't forget your algebra. But e to the c, it's some constant to another constant, raised to another constant. So we can just call that c. And this is our general solution. Our general solution has one constant in it if it's first order, if it's second order, it has two constants in it, and so on. And we can always check our solution. The original equation was y prime equals 3y. So if we want to plug that in, we replace y with what it's we got. But we also need to plug in y prime so we would need to find y prime. So we plug that in and we can see it is equal, therefore true, therefore a solution. Checks out. So what if I do another one? Same problem, same form. So we want to solve this, but remember this is the same form is up here, same problem. Here, this three turned out to be the power of three x. So we're gonna have the same solution here. My solution is y equals c e to the minus two x because that is my power, my exponent. So that's my solution, similar to above. And if I wanted to add to this problem, we can do an initial value problem. And if I want to have an initial value of x equaling 0 is a common value for x for initial value problems. And let's just say it's some constant. Why not? So we're going to plug it into our solution to solve for c to find a particular solution. So here x is equal to 0, and then my y value obviously is y not. So my y is y not c e to the minus 2 times 0. That is just e to the 0, which is just 1. We get y not equals c. And so the point of this procedure is so you can see that y not, which is my initial value here, turns out to be c. So c is my initial value. And whatever value this initial value was, that is my particular solution. So in general, this is my linear system, and we can represent it 
with just one simple equation, this left column we'll call y prime. And this turns out to be the matrix A, which is all of the coefficients. It's my coefficient matrix. And my unknowns are y, a column of y's. So clearly these are vectors. It's, this is y1 all the way to yn. This is y1 prime all the way to yn. So now let's do an example. So here's a system. It's just a very simple system. So remember, the, this is the same equations that we just solved. My solutions are And so you can just memorize that, or you can work them out if you'd like. Now um, I'm going to write out this in this form. If you notice, we have y1, y2, and it'll be y3, just a 3 by 3. So if we write this in the above notation, We have 3y1 plus 0y2 plus 0y3, y1 prime, 0y1 minus 4y2. We can see my y prime, which is my this whole row. So this is my a. And so we could even go y prime equals a y. Now similarly, if we write our solutions, we have all of our solutions here. So just copying that again. So when a is actually a diagonal, those diagonals are the exponents of my e. And just a note, these x's could be t instead. It could be x or t. doesn't matter. So that's how easy it is to solve differential equations when your a matrix is a diagonal. Okay? So what if a is not a diagonal matrix? Well, we'll fix that. We'll introduce an invertible matrix P that diagonalizes A. Does that sound familiar? Here's how we're gonna do it. It's basically gonna be done with this simple substitution that's easy to remember, Y equals P U. And so we just substitute it in. We substitute into there and there. So we'll have to take the derivative when you take the derivative of this, P is a constant matrix, so it's a constant, so it's P U prime, pretty simple. So A, instead of Y, we put P U for Y. Y prime is P U prime. And then we solve for U prime. Take P inverse of both sides. This becomes U prime. Uh, does that look familiar? That certainly does. That is your diagonal of eigenvalues. And there you go. Then it's the same process as above. So here's the summary with the steps. So we write the system y prime equals a y. So then you basically find p and d that diagonalizes a. Once you make the substitution, you solve this. And then once you've solved for u, you plug it back in here and there's your solution y. Your solution is always y. Because you solve this and our solution is u, which you plug it back in, and then our solution is y. Okay, let's do an example. So 
So here's a system of equations with two initial values. So let's write it in that form, y prime equals ay. And I could just write y if I want. There's my a. So find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors is what we're going to find. So I'm going to augment that. Oh, I can see that zeroes out pretty simply. I'll just go ahead and augment that with zero. And remember, we can clear our fractions on a basis because of that, lots of answers, so. Okay, so I got my second eigen vector. There's our substitution. Remember we're plugging it into that equation. So we need to take the derivative. The derivative is pu prime and y is pu, and I will left multiply, and there's my diagonal u. So let's write this out, u prime is my diagonal times u. So really this is u1 prime, u2 prime. If you want to write out your two equations so you can see it, but we should, we could skip this though. So u1 prime equals 2u1. And my second equation is u2 prime equals minus 3u2. And then do you remember, you can just write the solution or if you forgot, you can actually solve it. This is du1 dx, so if that is equal to, equals 2u1. I'm going to solve it. But we did it at the very first problem. Separate it. Get rid of the u1, bring it with the u1. Integrate, integrate. So, again, we can just... From here, just like we did in our second example, say u2 is equal to c e to the minus 3x. So we don't have to go through all those steps. Okay, so we solved for u, and then step, I'm forgetting what step that is. We solved for u. All we have to do is substitute it back into y equals pu, and we're done. So yeah, so 3 was my y equals pu. 4 was solve for u. And 5 is substitute back into my p. 1, 1 right here. Minus one four. And so we have our u1, u2. We just put it, substitute it back into there. So instead of u1, u1 is, u2 is, right there, that's u1. Right there, that's u1, not u2. Put it there. And we're done. We just got to multiply those out. So we can see the solution. Oh, except that we do have an initial value. We gotta solve for the C's. So our solutions are, again, this is a um, two, whoops, sorry. This is a two by one, this is a two by two. So let's multiply that out. We get another two by one. 
and we can write out our y1, y2 if we like. This dot dot. So it is. Oh, and since we, there are two different C's, we do have to sub index them. And then my second line, this gets dotted with that also. So I'm just taking the dot product. So now using initial conditions, we just plug it back into our two equations. You can see our two equations. Here's one equation, here's the second equation. This is a two by one, this is a two by one. So each spot is equal to each other. So just plugging in x equals zero, I get c1 minus c2 equals one, because that's your y. Or one equals c1 minus c2. Plugging in zero to my second equation, I get c1 plus four c2 equals six, because that's six. I'm just gonna use a straight substitution use Kramer's if you don't if you're trying to avoid fractions which is what I would do but this is an easy substitution and so my solutions just plugging in c1 and c2 here and writing out your equations that's it for today thanks for watching